old man Bronk coming to you from my garage again and I want to get one more quick Halloween prop done before the big day. I had four on my list this year but I was only able to get to two of them. I'll leave the other two on my project list. I'll get to them next year. Hopefully I'll be able to start a little sooner. It was about 10 years ago Halloween when this little guy here came knocking on my door trick-or-treating. Well, after I gave him his candy, he made one very, very poor choice. He decided he was gonna take a shortcut to my neighbor's house by cutting across my lawn. Well, he's been in here ever since, and every year I normally take the entire cage structure and just lay it on the ground in my front yard as kind of a friendly warning to all future trick-or-treaters. Well, this year, I want to get him hung off the ground. So I'm building a type of hangman structure. This way I'll be able to string him up on the hangman structure and he'll be able to dangle a good couple feet off the ground. That's going to be a much, much clearer warning for all the future trick-or-treaters. While this is a pretty easy project, it is a little larger and it is going to have a couple of stress points so there were a couple things I had to keep in mind while I was building it. Let me show you how I built it. Come on, let's get started. The first thing I do is cut a 2x6 to 7 feet. Another 2x6 I split into two 4 foot sections and then I split two 2x4s into four 4 foot sections. You'll need a couple other scrap 30 inch or so 2x4s, so you may need one more 2x4. I've mentioned before in earlier videos that my day job is a desk job, and because of that, as well as a very strict regimen of nightly hand lotions and weekly manicures, my hands are baby soft and I intend on keeping them that way. These boards, like most dimensional lumber, were pretty rough on all the corners, so I'm putting a quick chamfer on every corner. I wouldn't want to get a splinter. I'm going to be using a lap joint to connect the top beam with the upright, so I lay the boards out and scribe a line on each board where I need to begin each cutout. Adjust your circular saw to cut halfway through the 2x6. Don't worry about being exact. For this project, close is more than enough. Then grab your circular saw and own it with a slow motion walk to that 2x6. The first cut is the important cut, so I use a speed square as a guide to my circular saw. Once that cut is made, make 20. I'm going to wait 21 more cuts along the 2x6 for the lap joint. Using a hammer or a mallet, knock out all the pieces. As long as you cut all the pieces no bigger than about 3 16th of an inch or so, they should knock out pretty easily. It will leave a rough lap joint, so you will need to take a chisel, a plane, or some sandpaper to clean it up. I used a chisel followed up with my belt sander. The other 2x6 is short enough where I can safely use my table saw and table saw sled. I'll hog out the wood with a lot more cuts, but this will make for a ton less joint cleanup. Now to attach the, hold on, excuse me. Sorry about that. Now to attach the lap joint. I need to be able to take this completely apart so I will not be using any glue. This joint will have the most stress so I want to make it as strong as I possibly can without using glue. So I'm going to use four 3 8 inch bolts to hold this joint together. Tighten them down nice and secure. 
To really add strength to this joint, I'm going to use a couple of cross braces. I'll leave a link to how to build my miter sled in the description below. I use that to cut 45s on two pieces of scrap 2x4 at about 30 inches. Now to attach the cross braces. The nice thing about building Halloween props is they don't have to be exact. Position the first cross brace where the 45s will line up with the hangman beam and the vertical riser. Just do this by eye. There's no need to be perfect. Initially secure it with a few common deck screws. Turn the piece over and do the same for the cross brace on the other side, securing with deck screws. Once both cross braces are secured with deck screws, we're really going to secure them with a couple of 3 8 inch through bolts. I don't have a long enough 3 8 inch drill bit, so I use a smaller bit first and then the 3 8 inch bit, finishing the hole from the other side. Now slip in the bolts and secure them tightly with washers and nuts. This is now an extremely strong joint. Moving on to assembly of the base. The base is fairly large as well as the seven foot vertical riser. So I use a piece of scrap two by six as a template for that vertical riser. I first lay out the base around the vertical two by six template and clamp the base pieces in place. Strange things can happen in a shop. So I'd recommend staying very aware of your surroundings. I didn't. So this could have ended up much, much worse for me. Strange things indeed. Using deck screws, I first attached the two four foot two by fours to the small two by four block spacers. This will allow room for the vertical riser board to slide into place. I have a small 2x4 block spacer in the front and in the back. Next I use 3.5 inch screws to attach another 4 foot section of 2x4 as the front cross beam. This will make the front of the hangman structure very stable. Turning everything over will make it much easier to attach the hangman beam to the base. Flipping everything forward on its face allows me to easily slide the vertical riser into place on the base. Now it's very simple to add a few deck screws from both sides of the base into the vertical riser to secure it. Now using three and a half inch screws again, I attach the back base cross support. Make sure to screw this support to both 2x4 base pieces as well as the vertical riser. This will not only add stability to the structure, it will add more strength to the riser. Now lift it up to sit on the base and see how it looks. I was hoping to not have to use diagonal cross braces on the bottom, but quickly after raising this up, I saw that they were very much needed. Off camera, I used my miter sled again to cut miters on scrap two by fours about 30 inches long. Now align them up to the base and the vertical riser, much like we did earlier. Use deck screws to attach to the vertical riser and the three and a half inch screws to attach to the base. Do this on both sides and now the hangman structure is stable, strong, and complete. I don't think a through bolt is required on this brace. Now you'll see how I built the cage with two circles and PVC, as well as how to insert the trick-or-treater.
I waited until the next morning to paint and boy did it get cold in Georgia today. 38 degrees outside and for a cold weather hater like me, this makes me cranky. Much like my graveyard gate I built in a previous video, I use black and gray paint. I start with a base coat of black and then come back with very uneven streaks of gray. I finish the paint job with an even lighter coat of streaks of red, just for a bit of pop of color. And here it is in my front yard with that trick-or-treater hanging as a warning. It's big, but since I only use screws and bolts and no glue, I can completely take it apart for easy storage. There is a decent amount of force put on the structure when the cage is on it, but with the corner braces, I think it should be plenty strong enough. The only concern I have is the side to side or twisting stress it may have to endure. I didn't really do anything to strengthen that up. Unless there are some really big wind gusts, it should be fine. You know the drill by now. Please like, subscribe, and comment on this video. I really do appreciate it, and I love getting the comments. I read every one of them, and I do my best to reply to every one of them also. You want to be my super bestest of all time friends? Then, on all of your social media, share this video so your friends can see it. Until next time, see ya.